Liz here. I'm going to show you how I just butt a goat. Everybody does things differently, but I wanted to share with you on how I do it. Our little man here, he's, he's kind of our streamer boy. He's a friend of mine since she brought her goats here to do this butting. So what I do is, this is known as a disbutting box. It's a box where the animal's legs are hanging in there. There's a little support underneath, under their belly. Um, I recommend if you get it, make sure you get the headrest here. It's uh, like a stainless steel or metal one that you'll have control of being able to hold the animal's head on here. It's a little clip that you can keep things here on the side, but I've got the little thing down here. So he's nice, safe, and secure. First thing you want to do when you disbud a goat is you want to shave the area. Now, if it's a girl, you shave in a strip. And the reason being is the horns are growing in a circular way. So you don't have to disbud in such a large area. Because our young man here is a little boy, the horns grow in what's known as a triangular shape. And it's a little bit on an angle. It's not directly forward, but it's a little bit on an angle. So when we just bud, we're going to do not only the circular base here, but also the triangle here. So you're burning the root in all the different areas right down that way, and you will have a goat that doesn't grow scurs. Scurs are what you'll see on some goats where they've got funky little swirly things growing, truly not horns but attach like uh, extra pieces where a disbutting job didn't go as well. So this is how I do it. Again, this is just a suggestion. I hope that this video helps you. Now I start off with, I have an Oster trimmer that I use um, to trim goats, um, to shave goats for show and stuff like that. Um, I use a triple zero blade. Um, it makes it nice and short down there. The reason that you want to shave the area is two purposes. One, you want to be able to see the area that you're working. And two, most importantly, is when you go to disbud and stuff like that, if you have hair there, it makes a white smoke. It makes it difficult for you to see what you're doing, and it also can burn your eyes. Okay? So when you go to turn on clippers, the best way to do it is you turn the unit on first, let it set up, and then you push and pop the blade in. Okay? And the reason that you do that is it actually sets it where it balances itself and it's going to give you a better cut and the blades are the way they should be. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and I take the goats and you want to bring their, their ears back to get them out of the way. And you go ahead. Now like I said, because this one is a boy, we're going to go ahead and do a larger area to shave. Up in the front here. And it'll also give me a great way to show you guys on how things body. For the most part, obviously, you know that this is not hurting the goat. We're just trimming the hair. But they don't like the feeling that they're being held inside a disbutting box. A lot of times I'll have towels in there and stuff support their legs. Gives them a feeling of comfort, but you'll see that's why it's kind of thin shaped. It's uh Kind of like your arms are wrapped around them, but for the most part, it's because you want to have complete control of the animal so you don't hurt them. Come down again, like I said, a little bit more because he's a boy. I blow on it. Alright, they look good, buddy. And I think they named this one Karma. Okay. Now, you'll notice that his, um, horns are a little bit further. His little buds have grown in further than I like to. For boys, I usually do within the first three days. And the reason being is you'll feel just a tiny little bump there. almost feel like a pimple, a kernel, a corn, or whatever. That, to me, is the best time to just bud. You don't have as much horn to take off, and it's easier to do. Now, boys, like I said, I usually do within the first three days. Girls, I do within the first two weeks. I find I have great success, less chance for scurs, and it's a lot easier to do. So now we've got the area here that you see that we've got shaved. And if you look in the area very closely, you'll see that you'll see the part of the triangle that's actually moving forward, okay? So it's not directly forward, it's a little bit on an angle. Kind of, I'd say, around 10.30, 11 o'clock if you're kind of looking at it as a clock. So when we go to disbud, we're gonna come around and we're gonna do the top part here, then when we come back to do our figure eight, we're gonna do it on an angle here and cover this area as well. Same side over here, you'll see that there. Okay, so what I'm gonna bring out next is our disbudding tool. I like to use Reinhardt, there's several different ones out. Um, this is the Reinhardt X30. 
Uh, it's made for goats. It's your smaller size. They make larger ones that go all the way up for cows and stuff like that. Um, there's also an X50 that's also for goats, but it has an additional attachment that also has a triangular one. And I tried the triangular one before, but I've had great success with doing the circular one here because again, like I said, I do the figure eight. Before you do any of your disbudding, you want to make sure that it's hot enough. So you'll see on here, on the box here, a bunch of different marks. The reason being is I'm going to go and you're going to rock it and make sure that you make a complete circle. That way you know that it's hot. So again, I've made a circle, so I know that it's completely hot. So when you go to disbud your goat, I always bring the, the ear back. You don't want it in any way because this unit is warm, okay, and hot, of course, at the tip to um, burn your animal's ear or anything else. So I'm gonna hold this back. I bring the hand up here on the top of the nose and I'll go ahead and tuck it back. Oh no, you don't want to. But you wanna make sure that you have complete control of your animal so you don't hurt the animal, okay? And that you can do the best disbudding job that you don't have to go back and do things. So we're gonna go ahead and like I said, you'll see the circular mark here. We're gonna come on the top here. And I do a 10 second count of in a figure eight, you kind of rock it, go around, whatever the case. I do a ten second count. Some people do what's called an eight second, and they get down to a copper ring. I go just a little bit further, touch the top, I feel it bust through, and then you'll see I'll be able to take the cap off. I find that it's an easier area, you'll see, for me to be able to work, to move forward. Um, and again, I have found that with great success of not having scurs. That's kind of fun. I have a broken leg right now, so I've got one leg stuck out here. And no, I didn't break the leg on the farm, I promise. So, all right, sweetie boy. Mr. Carmel. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. We've got control in here. We're going to go ahead and take the disbudding here. And like I said, we're going to rock it in a figure eight for 10 seconds. So on the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. a second. He's like, ah, oh, you've been holding me in place. Uh, you'll see just the top of the cap. It's just the part of the skin that's burned off. I'll take that off and drop it. Okay? Now, if he was done a little bit earlier, this wouldn't have as much of a point. It would be more a little bit rounded, a little bit lower. But that's okay. Because we're going to come around, and when we come in here, we're going to rock this and come forward. But I'll show you that on the next one. So we're going to go ahead and do now his left side. Same concept here. We're going to come on the top. I'm going to rock it in a 10 seconds. I feel just a little pop as I'm pushing down, okay? And uh, then I pull back up. You want to do, I know you're, you're such, you're calling for mama. Um, you want to do pretty good force when you're going down on this. Um, best way to explain it, just, you'll feel it. You'll know that you're starting to rock it down and stuff like that. I'm trying to think of a best way to explain on how much pressure, but kind of like you're, I can explain to people like you're really pushing hard to push down some dry Play-Doh and flatten it out. So now that our Reinhardt, because you want to take a break for it to warm back up to get to complete temperature, so um, you don't have to put the animal through anything else that it doesn't need, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing, the circular on top, the tip of the uh, horn here in the center, lock it for 10 seconds, pop it up. Again, you want to pull a... Uh, our little man's ear back here. I put my finger over the top. You hold it in place, and we're gonna go ahead, make sure that you have control. So you don't want the animal to get hurt, okay? And usually you should be wearing leather gloves, and I'm terrible about it, so don't do what I do. Make sure you wear leather gloves so you don't burn yourself. Okay, so we're gonna come on the top here. Press down hard, and count to 10. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh no, you're going to push down. And again, and pull the cap right off, and it's good to go. And if the cap doesn't come off, don't worry about it. It's gonna dry up because there's no blood flow to it. It's gonna fall off. And again, the whole nice thing about all of this is when this is all done, it's gonna stab up over, it's gonna grow skin, hair, and you're never gonna know that you've got those horns. So I really prefer this. The reason being is if you have um, like four by four horse climbing fence or anything like that, a lot of goats sometimes that have smaller horns can get their head stuck in there. We do it because we um, have a children's farm here and we let, have a lot of children come out, so we like to take them off as well. But a lot of people, especially boar goats, keep their horns on and they're okay to be used in the um, shoe ring with horns. So now we're going to do our second part here, okay? Look at that. And what I'm going to do here is right where the tip 
tip is here is where the blood flow grows up. So I'm going to go and I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to start making just a little notch or a groove in here. The reason I like to do that as I slowly come down is it gives me control because this is kind of sliding and moving around, but you also want to make sure that you're on an angle. And like I said, again, if you look, you'll see the little bump here and the little bump here. That's where the part of the horn's going. So that's where I'm going to go ahead and take the disc budding. So instead of doing straight forward, I want to do just a little bit in on the angle. I tell everybody, it's kind of like pointing to 11 o'clock. So, how are we going on our next one? And the boys are the only ones that you have to do twice. Girls, you only need to do once because they don't have the triangular shape of a horn. So we're going to tuck his ears back to protect it. We're going to hold him in control. Make sure you've got, yes, yeah, sweetheart. We're going to go, oops. give it a second. All right. So I'm going to go in here. I'm making a little groove. I'm going to come forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. There we go. Nice job there, buddy. So you'll see now. So we've got the nice groove here. We've got the same mark down here. If you want, you know, this can come out. This will come off. You'll be able to see. Look at that. Nice area in there. Get this one. There we go. Burned off the blood flow. And came down here and got here. So you'll see it's a nice on an angle here. Then when we're done, we're going to spray, spray it with blue coat. Okay? So now we're ready to do the next one, okay? Ah, oh, no, sweetheart. And now that our iron is warmed back up, we're going to go ahead and do this one now. Okay. Now you'll see he's got a little bit of blood here, which is okay, but it makes it a little bit slippery. So when you go to put the iron on to begin to burn the quick, you want to just take your time with it so it doesn't slip, because it will be a little bit slippery, okay? You can, and sometimes I keep a towel around, you can go ahead and dry the area with the towel. That makes you feel more comfortable. I forgot my towel, so I'm going to use my hand. All right, big buddy. Again, tuck the ear back. Bring him down into the uh, headrest, and we're going to begin. So, like I said, we're going to do the groove, come down at an angle, and come forward. So, we're going to go here in an angle. Put it in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. Good job, buddy. They're going, yeah, right. So again, you'll see this will be able to pop up. Okay. And you don't have to take this off. For the most part, this is going to fall off as it steps. So there's no blood flow. But I did want to show you. There you go. It's got a nice marking in here. This will fall off, so I'm going to leave that one. You've got the mark in here. You've gone forward. Remember I said pointing it towards 11 o'clock. Well, he's good to go. So we're going to go ahead now and take what's called a product called Blue Coat. And it's a germicidal, fungicidal, all those kind of things. It's kind of like a liquid band-aid antibiotic. You want, and as you see, my hands are purple. So you want to cover the animal's eyes, as we've been doing a couple of disbuddings here. Shake the cam, and you're going to spray it to seal it. Oops, got a little more there. Okay, so he's going to have a purple head. But you want to make sure that this is completely covered, okay? Sometimes you blow on it to dry it. You're good to go. This will eventually, the purple will go away in a couple of days. This will scab up as it already has started. Um, the skin will begin to heal and it'll grow across. Hair will grow completely over and you'll never know that he had horns. And of course with the boy, he's gonna build a nice crown of hair that's gonna grow for him. So this is how I disbud a goat. This is my only suggestion is how I do it. It's what success has brought for me. Everybody has different ways of doing it going it down to a 10 second, going it down to an eight second copper ring. It's on how what, you know, is easiest for you. This is what works best for this farm. This is how we find out that we don't have scurs. So I hope this helps you out. If you guys have questions, please email me at any time. The email's on there. And um, have a goat plus day. Thank you.